So we got the axles slid out. As you can see, I got the pin sticking out right there. Still draining. Uh, we bought new shock mounts. We're going to cut these off. Cut it off over here. Because um, those are the ones that I made to get me by until I did this project. So we got to cut those off. And after we get those cut off, we got to go ahead and take the backing plates off because we have disc brake conversion backing plates for this thing. Um, we're going to clean it up and we're going to paint it. But uh, this is what we got to do so far. I got to cut off this down here. Also, the old shock mount location. Get that smooth. But first, let's clean all this stuff up and let's go ahead and get backing plates off and get this thing cleaned up. I'm just kind of test fitting everything, just seeing how everything's going to line up. I must say it's going to it's going to work out pretty good. I've got to finish grinding this bracket off, um, so this will come down forward. As you can see, it's crooked, but I think it's going to work out good. It even has a little cutout right here for your breather and your brake block. Um, another thing is it's hollow inside so you can run your brake lines inside I do have to weld up these holes though but there is the diff cover mocked up in this little truss I don't want a great big truss back there um, this will work just fine because we're going to have a shock mount here a shock mount back there so the only thing I got to do now is Go ahead and flap disc this rear end and get all the welds down the bracketry where I cut off. Um, we're going to clean up the welds on the diff itself, weld around them, and then weld up our truss. We're going to leave our diff cover on there, weld up our truss, make sure it lines up right, and uh, make sure this is all clean. And then we can go ahead and start putting our backing plates on for our disc brakes so this is actually going to turn out pretty good this the rear end the reason why i started with the rear end because it's the easiest and it doesn't take a lot of time so let's go ahead and clean this rear end up start welding this truss on Alright, so we got the truss welded on. Um, a lot of people is going to ask me, I know, right off the bat, why didn't I go around the diff? Um, it's not necessary on the eight and a quarter. For one, it's got three inch tubes. And two, this just helps it from bending a little bit and spinning the tubes. And as you can see, I actually welded the tubes clear around. And so I just welded it where it's supposed to be. So the biggest problem you have on an eight and a quarter is actually the tube spinning because they're only welded on the back side, like in the holes right here, and they're really junky welds. So I went through both sides, welded the tubes, and I went ahead and welded the truss on. Now, this is more and sturdy enough. You can feel 
how sturdy it is. One thing I don't understand where I ordered this truss from, it came painted uh, in the pictures it came bare. So I don't understand why it came painted, which was dumb. Um, I'd rather have it raw. The gears and everything I'm going to be doing under the Jeep because the tools that you have to use to adjust the backlash and stuff on the eight and a quarter um, it has to be solid and I don't have anything to strap it down with. So we're going to do the gears last, but I probably won't video that. There's tons of videos on that there how to gear eight and a quarter because if I put all that stuff in one video, this video is going to be two hours long. So I want to show you guys how to shave an eight and a quarter. If you do not have an aftermarket diff cover like I have, do not shave the eight and a quarter because this is the sheet metal, stamp sheet metal, and this is the aftermarket. So what I'm gonna do is actually shave this to where it is not sticking below this. You could go as far as you want, as long as you don't get into the bolt hole. I'm just gonna shave around it until it's even with the diff cover and maybe go just a hair more past the diff cover. Now, as you can see, this is even with the diff cover. And as you can see, I can even grind it around the diff cover to make it round on the bottom. All right, so we're gonna stretch the rear end of the Cherokee just a hair. We're gonna use the stock mounts. A lot of people are afraid to do this, but it's no different from using the aftermarket mounts. Now I'm gonna be using a little bit bigger center pin for the leaf springs. And everybody knows when you do a junkyard lift, you have to take a grinder and grind down the bottom of the center pin to get it to fit in this hole. What I'm gonna do is actually remount these holes for adjustment, because there's the pinion. Um, I'm gonna be mostly focusing right here because nobody wants to put it farther in the Jeep, but I'm gonna be taking a reamer from Harbor Freight. It's a Cobalt reamer, I paid like 20 bucks for it. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and ream it out to this size of the center pin that I'm using. Basically, I reamed this out on both sides, which I think going to matter because I'm going to be basically using just this side, but at least I have adjustments if I ever need to. Now I have adjustable rear end. Jock mounts that I got. I was just going to order the two tabs, but you have to screw around with trying to line them up and everything. I just got it with the back piece on it. That way it'll make it a lot more stronger if you hit on the bottom. But uh, basically, this is what they're gonna look like. It's four three inch tube, it's universal. So I'm gonna weld these on here, make sure my diff is level right here. Make sure these are level, measure out five and a half and weld these on. shock mounts welded on both sides turned out really well so we got those welded on got this all done everything is welded up so what we're going to do is clean this axle up first paint it and then we'll put our disc brakes on and get that out of the way so i went ahead and put the first coat of paint down I'm not rattle canning it i'm using pour 15 in the little little can you can get off uh amazon I think you get like four of them in a pack. But I'm brushing the paint on. After I get my base coat down, this stuff is coatable so you can spray paint over or whatever. So this will help it stop rusting for one. It's paint over rust. That's what Pour 15 stands for. So that's why I'm using it. You don't have to really grind everything down to metal. That's why I didn't grind everything down to metal. I just cleaned everything up. Um, and then I'm gonna go over it with Rust-Oleum paint. 
Um, I've seen a lot of Jeepers and YouTubers do this. So I'm going to give it a shot. I'm just going to overcoat it with gloss black. And the whole differential is going to be gloss black. But I think it has turned out really, really well. Um, we're going to let this dry, roll it over, do a coat, put the rust oleum on it. Then after all that's good, we can put the disc brakes on, paint the backing plates. I want to do that separate so it's, if I ever had to take the backing plates off, it wouldn't be pulling paint from the axle. So I'm just doing it one step at a time. So we went ahead and actually got this part mounted here just to test fit it and make sure everything's going to fit. We got to clean this all up, paint it to match the, uh, the housing. But a lot of people say you had to uh, notch these bolts, and I didn't have to. And I used the same size bolts that come out of it and what they recommend, and I didn't have to notch them. And I used these nuts here that have the neoprene in them, also with some blue Loctite. So we're going to go ahead and just go ahead and put this side on and get it over with. All right, we got both sides on. I'm gonna get this stuff cleaned up, get this painted, let it cure for a couple days. Put our axles in. We got some axles, chrome all the axles, or almost chrome all the axles. We got them on sale. Um, I think they're the right ones because the ones they sent me really just don't look like it. Specs, the bolt sizes, the brake lines that I used, the uh, backing plates and caliper brackets that I used is all in the description below. So you know what I use. Um, so don't forget to check out the description because it has everything that I've used. Clear down to the diff cover and the truss. So let's get it cleaned up. Let's get it painted. And let's start getting this thing back under the Jeep. It's been out way too long. And it's time to uh, get these disc brakes, brakes ready to roll. We got it all painted black. Gloss black. It'll dry like that. Got the caliper mounts on the backing plates everything is painted now we're just waiting on the calipers the rotors the axle seals and we'll be able to throw this thing back together um, another thing that we have to do is actually put longer studs in the axles because the ones that come on the newer Cherokees on the back are actually shorter and they won't accept the rotors they'll be too short so I had some old wheel bearings laying around from the front. I pounded those out, and that's where I got my uh, studs from because the parts store wanted a, a good chunk of change for 10 studs. So I had some old wheel bearings laying around the junk pile, and I pounded those out, and they actually fit. Here it is. The axle is pretty much complete. Got everything back together. The diff covers on. Got the rotors. I got the calipers. I got everything that I need to throw this thing under the Jeep. Um, I'm going to leave the calipers on there uh, for now. 
took everything back off because uh, the lighter it is to put it under the Jeep, the better. Um, so I was just test fitting everything. I got the rubber hoses, all that stuff. Mocks up great. The only thing I got to do now is go out to the Jeep and put it up on the leaf springs, put the U-bolts on, and then start hooking up my brake stuff. Bleed the brakes and add some diff fluid and uh, we should be good to go. There's a notch on this that usually sets against the caliper here. Well, you don't have to use that. Um, I just flipped it around because you see that it has the steel marks on both sides. So it doesn't matter. This honestly just keeps it from spinning. Um, but it shouldn't spin. Here's the part number, made in China. Let's go ahead and stick it on. All right, we got the everything all buttoned up on both sides. The wheels are on and all the cables are hooked up. So let's go take it for a test drive and see how good it does. <laughs> This thing stops on a dime, but running these big 35s and using the stock brakes in the front, because when a lot of people do the back, they swap the WJ knuckles in the front. Just by doing the back disc brakes, this thing stops really, really well for 35s. I'm impressed. I like it. And plus, if I break an axle, it's not going to fly out with the eight and a quarter. You don't have to worry about that. And she's built and ready to go. All right, so we finally got the rear end built. And all of this stuff is in the description below if you want to order the same thing that I've ordered. Now, this was a, a ultimate budget eight and a quarter build. Now, why I say this is going to be as strong as an eight eight um, is because an eight eight stock is pretty strong. And I'm pretty sure we might be a little bit stronger than an eight eight now. But all the stuff that I bought to build this eight and a quarter. It was all off the internet. Um, and honestly, I got deals on some axles uh, on Black Friday. Um, so that might alter the price a little bit. Um, I got some deals, I guess just some deals. Sometimes you get deals. I don't know. I got some deals on some the, the trust and stuff like that. I didn't reach out for sponsors or anything. I built this with my own money. Uh, to show you guys that the eight and a quarter will be strong enough for this Cherokee with 35s. Uh, and I showed you, as you can see back here, I have like a little gazebo thing set up. Um, just to show you that you can do this in your backyard. I put a little bit of heat in there, run some power to it with the extension cord, a big heavy duty outdoor extension cord. And I welded this thing up. Um, we'll talk about the price here in a minute. But honestly, the way we built this, I think it'll be pretty tough. A lot of people was like, you should have went straight to the 8.8. You should have went this. You should have went that. I'm not planning on going 37s or 40s. For around here, 35 inch tires, and what I'm wanting to do is plenty big enough, and with the way I'm building these axles, they're gonna hold up to the abuse the abuse of my foot and the 35 inch tires. Now, it would have cost more to build an 8.8 than to build the eight and a quarter, because you have to buy uh, different stuff for the 8.8 to make it work with the Cherokee and I was like well I'll just go to a junkyard and buy an 88 with disc brakes every one that I found had 373 gears in it so I'd have to do a re-gear or do a re-gear on the whole the whole Jeep but then you have to get into all that and all that good jazz and I'd have to get into it anyway with the the eight and a quarter because once you take the carrier out of an eight and a quarter you have to readjust it because it's a pain in the butt for a junkyard 88 they were 400 dollars. i'm not paying that i'd had i'd have well over a thousand dollars in an axle that I already can you know an eight and a quarter i can build to make just as strong as a 88 
So let's go ahead and get into the parts list, what we bought. I didn't get to record everything. So we went ahead and we ordered axles. Um, they're a little bit tougher in stock. We ordered like little things like the seals and stuff. I'm not going to count because that's just maintenance. But we, we got the axles. We got the truss. We got the backing plates for the disc brake conversion. Um, we got the caliper kit. We got a rotor and brake pad kit. And we even got a, uh, instead of going with a lunchbox locker in the back, we went with a slip differential thing um, we put in here. We already flared in here. Um, I didn't show none of the gearing, none of that stuff, putting it together. There's tons of videos online. That would have been an, its own video in itself because it's a pain doing an eight and a quarter. Don't let me discourage you from doing it. Look up videos on how to do it. But the tool that you got to buy, you got to have it in the vehicle. But we had to buy some shock mounts, which I had to modify. I actually had to modify those because instead of having the shock with the hole facing towards you, I turned it. It's how these shock mounts work. I had to actually cut the tab and lean it out a little bit. As you can see right here, the shock sets on an angle now that I turned them around. So we bought shock mounts and a diff cover. And the price of doing all that and making this thing strong and reliable. So if I break an axle, um, that's the only thing good good thing about an 8.8. You can buy a C-clip eliminator, but I got disc brakes. It'll hold the axle in now. So after we did all that, we make it reliable. We make it tough. The price is, now a lot of people ain't going to like this because I call it the eight and a quarter ultimate budget uh, build, which it is. Uh, this is pretty cheap. I mean, you can't get any cheaper than this because we stay with 355 gearing. Um, $1,510.64. Now, let's say we go buy an 8.8 and do the same exact thing that we did to the eight and a quarter, but do it to the 8.8. Now, there's a lot more involved in the 8.8 because we got to change the gearing and we got to change or we got to do a bracket swap kit. So let's let's add all that in to with what the same exact thing we did with the eight and a quarter truss axles. Uh, we don't have to count the brakes because they already come with disc brakes. But let's you know we'll we'll leave that out. But the axles, the the locker, and all that stuff we're going to add just like we did to, to anything to make. I'm going to do it budget budget as possible. To get it to fit under this Jeep in the same build that we did with the eight and a quarter. If we would have went with the eight eight, bought it from a junkyard, did all that stuff, you're looking at two thousand two hundred and thirty two dollars and seventy four cents. I think I'm gonna have good luck out of the eight and a quarter. I'm happy with the way it turned out. Let me know what you guys think and if it inspired you to build one. The next one we're going to be doing is the Dana 30 in the front. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. I'm Cherokee Ronnie. Stay dirty, my friends.